This is the Demicelli Retro Radio. And guess what? It's also a Bluetooth speaker. If you are interested in this device, it's probably because of the style. I'm not sure what era this is supposed to be, but it does remind me of a vintage car. This looks like an analog speedometer. In reality, this is the FM tuning dial, and the only other control on the front of this device is the volume control. There are a couple of status lights to indicate the mode that it's in. The top light is Bluetooth or auxiliary input, and the bottom light is FM radio or USB. I do like the chromed accent features. However, this device is almost entirely made of plastic. The one exception is this part of the handle. Even this part is plastic, but I mean, I'm not complaining about the build quality. It seems to be solid enough. I'm just letting you know. I am going to complain about the controls on the back. I mean, look at these buttons. Can you tell what they do? I can't, but maybe if you get up really close, you can see, yes, there are slight indentations on the buttons to let you know what they do, but come on, put some ink on these things. I mean, it's on the back. You're not going to spoil the aesthetic of the device. Okay. I do have some good things to say about the control design. For one thing, they have a power switch here. It's a switch, not a button. I like that. This is a slider switch. I would have accepted a rocker switch or even combined functionality with the volume knob, but they didn't do that. So when you turn off the unit and turn it back on again, it will be on the same volume that you had it when you turned it off. The play pause button is here, sandwiched between the track forward and reverse buttons. Both of those are just fine. Uh, my, like I said, my only complaint is that they're not labeled well. So easy to fix. We have the USB-C charging port here, the USB memory stick port here, and a three and a half millimeter auxiliary input port here. Now, when you plug a three and a half millimeter cable in here, it will automatically switch to that source. Same goes for the USB port, kind of, sometimes. And the reason why I say that is because I tried three different memory sticks, only one of them worked. I don't know if, if it was a capacity issue or a problem with the music format, or I don't know what happened. It's not documented what they accept, so you just have to experiment, I guess. I don't really understand why they chose to have the status lights be multifunctional. Why would you have the Bluetooth sharing a status light with the auxiliary input? And similarly, why would you have the FM radio share a status light with a USB memory stick? That just doesn't make sense to me. I would almost just rather get rid of the status lights altogether. You can figure it out or make them distinct, one of the two. One minor feature that I do want to mention are these rubber feet. I think if you had a pure plastic bottom, the device might vibrate in an unpleasant manner or slide around the table. So this is just a nice feature to have. We have established that this speaker looks cool and it does some useful things and it would look fantastic in your home. Well, we didn't establish that, but I am asserting that. So how does it sound? Well, it, it depends. I don't have a lot of specifications for this device other than this is a five watt speaker. That doesn't sound like a lot, but it's enough. Just visually looking at this, I would call this a three inch paper cone speaker. And if you look at the back, it says subwoofer. I think if it had been labeled aardvark, it would have been just as accurate. There's no bass here, but this speaker sounds like a device like this should sound, which means there is a lot of mid-range and it's a decent mid-range speaker. Some artists really live in those mid-range frequencies and sound good. Green Day, Radiohead, Pixies, The Beatles, uh, Hollies, The Platters, Eric Clapton, they all sound great on this. I don't know what was going on, but I think there were some resonance frequency issues that were really messing with some artists played on this device. Uh, Billie Eilish, Neil Diamond, Stray Cats, Nirvana, 
uh, air supply. They something was it was they just didn't sound good. And there was an issue with treble clipping that was messing with Daisy and the Scouts. The Demosilly Retro Radio has a 1500 milliamp hour battery, which they claim will give you five hours of listening pleasure. That seems a little light to me. I would like to see it at 12 hours or 24 hours, something like that, but that's not what you get here. The FM radio works well. It does have a 13.8 inch retractable antenna, which I didn't have to use to pull in all the stations that I wanted in my area. The ad copy on Amazon has some misleading and conflicting information. There is no support for shortwave radio or AM radio. How would I rate the Demosilly Retro Radio? Well, it's mostly about the look and it looks fun. This would be great for a garage or a kitchen or your study or anywhere where you want that retro vibe. As far as sound quality goes, uh, well, to be honest, most devices back in the day didn't sound that great. And I think this sounds at least as good as that. I, it sounds somewhere between good enough and good. And for most people in most situations, that's probably enough. The biggest issue in my mind is the battery life, but I'm not even sure I would bring this outside anyway. There's there's no claims of water or dust resistance here. The speaker's open, all the ports are open. I'm not sure I would bring this outdoors. Demosilly Retro Radio, I am giving you a three out of five rating. It is a solid middle of the road experience and it sure looks pretty. Thanks for stopping by.